Now, psoriasiform pattern. This is a classic example of psoriasis, which is the prototype of the psoriasiform pattern. The first thing you'll notice is the epidermis is thickened. We call that acanthosis. Acanthosis, in this case, is not just thickening of the epidermis, but particularly the reedy ridges are very long, and they kind of have a test tube shape. Sometimes they bulge at the bottom and have a club shape. Sometimes they fuse with their neighbors, like you're seeing here. Those are all features that are very characteristic of psoriasis. And psoriasis, in particular, has not just acanthosis, but that very regular, all of the reedy are about the same length and about the same size and they all kind of look just like the same. That's very typical of psoriasis in a classic situation. The other thing psoriasis has is loss or diminishment of the granular layer. Look, the granular layer is totally wiped out there. You can barely even see it. And there's a bunch of parakeratosis, like wall to wall. If you go across the slide, there's almost all of the corneal layer is parakeratosis. Whereas in sponge derm, like I showed you earlier, you tend to have kind of more patchy little foci of parakeratosis. In psoriasis, um, unless it's been previously treated with steroids and then it can kind of look atypical or un un not atypical, excuse me. It can look unusual or non-classic. Uh, but this is the classic example. And, you know, the loss of the granular layer usually goes hand in hand with parakeratosis, kind of anywhere in derm path. That means the epidermis is growing too rapidly. It doesn't have time to develop a granular layer. And accordingly, the nuclei that normally break down right here before the dead keratinocytes go up and make the stratum corneum, those nuclei don't have time to dissolve. So you get nuclei retained in the corneal layer. So that's a real simple explanation. When you see parakeratosis, that area of the skin is growing faster than normal. It, it, the time that it takes from a keratinocyte to go from the basal layer to the top, normally about 28 days. In psoriasis, it's like 7 to 10 days, something like that. Um, so that's also why squamous cell carcinoma in situ and actinic keratosis, you also tend to see parakeratosis over those because they're growing more quickly and they're not maturing appropriately. The other thing, psoriasis, you can kind of see it here. There's dilated little tangles of capillary blood vessels in the papillary dermis. I find that actually one of the most useful findings. Um, even early or unusual examples of psoriasis usually will have that. The only problem is if you have a biopsy from the leg, um, stasis vascular changes can look kind of similar, so it can be harder to tell if you have that or not. And there's usually kind of mild lymphocytic infiltrate down here, but not a ton of inflammation in most cases. And so psoriasis is psoriasform, but there are a variety of other kind of more esoteric things that can be um, psoriasform. Syphilis is one that's important to know about because there is an increasing incidence of syphilis in recent years. So if you see long reedy like this with a kind of band of lymphocytes and plasma cells underneath it, do a spirochete immunostain to make sure it's not secondary syphilis. All right, psoriasis also has neutrophils in the stratum corneum, a very characteristic finding that is usually present. And so these are sometimes called Monroe's microabscesses. You know, there has to be a fancy eponym for everything in derm and derm path, usually, usually several of them for each different uh, disease or thing. Um, that's just part of our field, I guess. And again, look, the granular layer is gone. It's just wiped out. And here's an example of guttate psoriasis, which has little tiny little tiny round um, patches and plaques clinically rather than the larger plaques of psoriasis that, that most of you have probably seen patients with or family members even with before. Guttate looks different and accordingly, microscopically, it doesn't usually have that real classic elongated reedy. The acanthosis can be a lot more subtle, but you tend to see these little mounds of parakeratosis with neutrophils oftentimes, and that's uh, what guttate psoriasis looks like. So it's not, not the classic plaque psoriasis appearance.